winning city. What's up, everybody? I love that kid down there. He's got a gallon of soda. That a boy, drink it up. It's just uh, unbelievable that you come in here and, you know, that uh, you have a historic building over here. I mean, the best of the best. Played there, or sang there, or wrestled there, and we wrestled there. I mean, awesome. We love San Antonio. And we even were at John Michaels' uh, wedding here, his first wife. It ain't like Ric Flair, there's about a million of them. We actually just uh, came back, me and him. We just got in town, back to Tampa on Monday and flew out on Wednesday to see you guys because we were all at Ric Flair's uh, last match and saw a lot of good people. So if you have any questions about that or any stories along the way about any wrestlers that we know, uh, they'll definitely have to be pretty crazy because uh, there's a reason the Nasty Boys in the, ain't in the Hall of Fame right now. Uh, might have to do with how we acted. With Ace McMahon, I've got a seat right here. You got a seat okay, there. okay, Jerry. There you go. Take right, it away, Greg. Thanks for having us. We love San Antonio. Make some noise. Make some noise. Hey, I got a, I got a funny, I got a funny story about the building next door. Well, two of them, but one is the <laughs> Kerry Von Eric. No lie. So we're waiting to go out for our match, and Kerry goes running out. You know. In that, in the old building over there, there's a big ramp that comes down the back. So we're standing there waiting to go out. Gary Von Eric runs out and goes, "God bless you, Houston. It's great to be back again." And he said, <laughs> <laughs> and then, good, "Good old, who else could do to get away with that but Gary Von Eric?" Oh man, he thought he was in Houston. He said, "I think that I think the San Antonio fans got a big kick out of it." <laughs> But is is that, that a sin in the wrestling world? No, you, they, they, not when Kerry does it. Was, we does laughed it. our ass off. It was so funny. <laughs> and then, and, then, and uh, the, uh, another good story is we asked, uh, God bless them, Owen Hart and Coco Beware. We're a tag team. And then Coco had the bird. Was it Frankie, the name of the bird? The, uh, what was it, a parrot or pigeon or whatever the hell he carried around? Frankie was a big bird Coco had. The big, the Birdman, and Owen Hart. So they were a tag team, and uh, we they wrestled earlier. And we asked Owen, "Hey, you got we we need to ride to the airport. Will you wait for us?" And he says, "Okay, but hurry up because I don't want to have you know a late charge on my return to my rental car." So he rushed us. He was so worried about getting a late charge on his rental car. Now, the cars pulled down that big ramp with that building across the street, the old San Antonio Coliseum over there. And we very, we didn't even take a shower. We couldn't change our clothes, threw our stuff on, jumped in the car. And I was in the front seat with, o with Owen. Owen Hart's driving. And me, Frankie, the bird, and Coco are in the back. And Owen goes, puts it in reverse. We're going up the ramp backwards. Up, I think about 50 miles an hour. Because he's so worried about getting a late charge on his rental car. And all of a sudden, boom, boom, there's big poles, like uh, concrete steel poles at the top of that ramp so the trucks don't hit it coming in now. He hits one and the bird, the cage explodes. Frankie's flapping around inside the car. Coco's going, oh my God, what, Frankie, you killed Frankie. And the bird's flapping around and there's, there's feathers everywhere. I go, what the hell just happened? My head smashed the back of the window. And Owen's going, open. And he, everybody's like, we got hit by a Mack truck. Knobs jumps out and goes, you hit the pole. The whole rear end of the cars caved in. It's total. So we go, don't worry about it. He goes, oh my God, the rental car company. He's worried about the extra charge. Knobs goes, I'll talk to him when we get there. And then on the way, we're Owen speeding in the airport with the whole right back end of the car ripped off from the pole. And it's clanking back there. And Hobbs goes, Owen, did, did you get the insurance? <laughs> and he went, what, what's that? And I went, I'm going to be Oh my God, here we go. So Hobbs took it from there and went in and tried to do the whole thing. What did you tell the Renick Hurts guy? He tried to talk about, listen, we're wrestlers and we, you know, we're, 
where somebody rammed us or something and it's not our fault. Well, I don't think the guy comes out and sees the it car. It didn't work. It didn't work. And Owen makes the biggest deal out of this now. He didn't have the insurance. Now, Owen takes this to a higher court. He gets back to Calgary and gets the bill, like a two or three thousand dollar bill for the car. Now you get we come back on the road and he's like, hey, uh, remember that ride I gave you in San Antonio? Yeah. Well, you know, I smashed the car. Uh, the bill's three thousand. I thought we'd all split it. We're like, what? Ooh. So well, so now it's Coco Coco disappears. So it's me and Nobs there. And it's like, well, why should we pay? I mean, it, is it, doesn't your own insurance cover it? And it was like, it went back and forth a little bit. So Owen gets mad now. Now he goes, we get off the road again. And there was a little ribbing going on too about the car, because he was so nervous about it. But he goes to the higher court, goes home and pleads his case in front of Stu Hart. Right, and um, it only makes sense that, you know, they were, you were pitching in the ride that day, everybody splits the bill. <laughs> so Owen now comes back on the road again with Stu's blessing. Stu says that that bill needs to be split. Now it's getting, thing now we're getting charged, somehow we're getting charged the most. I said, we all we did was get a ride to the airport. And, and the reason you hit it was because you were afraid to get an extra $20 charge if the car got back late. God, I swear to God, this happened. It ended up, guess who got stuck with the bill? <laughs> After all, the fiddling back and forth, and a song was written on the plane. I wrote a song about it, and we sang it over and over because who got stuck with the bill was his brother, Bret Hart. <laughs> After Stu and Owen complaining about it so far and all, Bret finally goes, all right, I'll pay the damn bill. Here's the $3,000. And then Brett came back and goes, you know, I had ended up paying that car, but I went, really? We didn't think it was that serious. Do you want me to go, don't worry about it and all that. So I wrote a song. It was like the Beatles song. And every day on the air, in the airplanes, it went like this. Owen, don't you drive my car. Beep, beep, and beep, beep. <laughs> and over and over and over. And Owen's sitting in the front of the plane steaming. And I would sing that song. Go oh, on, don't you drive my car. Beep, beep, and beep, beep. <laughs> like the Beatles song. A million times we drove them crazy. So that's the two stories. And that's what happened to us in San Antonio. Amongst having some of the greatest matches. We wrestled the Yellow D over there. We wrestled, I think, Brett, and, uh, Brett Hitman and uh, the Foundation. The Hard Foundation over there. Some of the greatest. We wrestled the Rockers over there, and Shawn Michaels was from this town. Yep. Uh, and over in that building, we had some of the greatest times, uh, didn't we, Nob? So he started talking about us coming with Shawn. He could tell you more about that. And that was crazy too. But uh, we, we. Uh, anybody has any questions or anything? Uh, feel free to come up and ask this question. Uh, we'll uh, try to tell it or. Uh, you know, whatever you want to do, and uh, anybody you want to ask question on, uh, you know, any of the wrestlers that we know, we have some stories about everybody. We have a microphone right over here, oh, so come, little, come form a line over here. Come on, little guy. The littlest guy. Go. The yeah. Li the littlest guy in the place got a question. Give a, let us know your name and where you're from. <laughs> Noah. Hi, Noah. Which question? Have you fought the Ultimate Warrior before? Did he ask if we fought Ultimate Warrior? He said, yes. have you wrestled yeah, the Warrior? Yes. I have an Ultimate Warrior story. Uh, <laughs> somehow when he got time to always wrestle single, I was the one to always pick the wrestle single, so I got to pick the wrestle uh, the Warrior. And uh, so we went out there, me and Sag, and you know we did our thing, but uh, <laughs> He just got his nose done, you know, I guess he didn't like the shape of it or whatever, and he just got done healing and everything. And in that match, we go look, when we knock him, when I finally start getting, get him, get him down, I dropped an elbow and he was trying to get up, and I buried, accidentally of course, but I buried his nose, and boom, 
and uh, I broke his nose again. So, man, when I got back out and came in the locker room, he was going, you broke my nose, Doc, you broke my nose. And man, I, I didn't mean to do it, I'm sorry, man, yo. But uh, I'm pretty sure Vince wasn't happy with that because, you know, he, the warrior was complaining about us, but it, it was definitely, definitely an accident. But no, <laughs> um, but Warrior was, was a good good person, you know, uh, uh, more business, you know, when, when he was out around the guys, so that was cool, but uh, like uh, Hulkster and Flair and that, they were, you know, we'd go, everybody would go out together, you know what I mean? So when Warrior went out, he was more to himself and doing his own thing, but everybody respected him and what he did, so, you know, he was a good friend, we had him around in his house and all that stuff. We. We had a great match that was oh, yeah. set up SummerSlam 92, and uh, it was me and Noms against the Ultimate Warrior and Macho Man Randy Savage. That great was match, on, great match. That's on YouTube and all the channels. That's a, that was a great, there's two parts of that match. And that match set up uh, Randy and Warrior to go, Macho Man and Warrior to wrestle before Brett and Davey at Wrestle uh, SummerSlam 1992, 87,000 people at Wembley Stadium. And we set that up. And during that match, Ric Flair and Mr. Perfect, Kurt Henning, ran down and we all beat the hell out of him. And it was a hell of a, it was a really good match. At the end, Randy somehow got our helmet. We actually, Jimmy, we, we actually beat him. him. Beat By them. a DQ, but we won. But it was, it was a good match with two both uh, Ultimate Warrior a comeback, and both uh, you know Macho with a comeback. So you know that's that's double. You know two of the most famous wrestlers there, and on one side. So you really had to you know be thinking and be on your feet. But we had a, it was an awesome, awesome match we had. If you had a chance, go check it out. But by the time Randy came around for the second comeback, we were kind of out of gas. So his slams didn't look that great because. <laughs> There was more pressure we could do to pull ourselves up. I was blowing up so bad I could hardly even breathe, but uh, it turned out to be great, you know, and uh, that's when Flair came down with Mr. Perfect and there was a big schmoz at the end, but yeah, man, uh, uh, very special time and honor, you know, like uh, I, we were just at the Ric Flair last match thing and yeah, I, I was one of the roasters and just to be asked by Rick to, to be part of that is an honor for us because we come in just like you fans do, man. We're, we're fans of the, the professional wrestling business. And then you've got to meet and the greatest wrestlers of all time and actually hang with them and be part of their lives and know their is families that, is awesome. It's is unbelievable. That, is that his favorite wrestler, the Ultimate Warrior? Yes, I know. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 And we were, at, we were, we were there. there for that whole, we were there for Ultimate Warriors. Yeah. We were at that. Ultimate Warriors house. He had a nice house out in Arizona, beautiful big place out in Arizona. So. You know, we, we uh, hung with everybody, so it was a very good time, and we're, we're just happy to be friends with the legends like the Ultimate Warrior and the Hulk Hogan's and the Ric Flair's. I mean, uh, even, you know, when you talk about Shawn Michaels, Shawn Michaels is our friend. I mean, we were at his wedding, like I said, when he got married back here, and we know Shawn since 1987, so 86, actually. So that's a long time, man, and uh, we're still good friends after all these years. And we, you know we're all going through our different things in our lives and this and that, but uh, definitely the hardcore wrestling when Sad after Sad got hurt took a toll on my body. Even though it was only two years in WCW and doing that, that was every night, almost 300 nights a year, where you're going through tables, getting hit over the head with trash cans and and. Uh, chairs and remember back then they weren't going out and buying stuff for you. Mm -hmm. You're getting stuff from the back of the building, stuff that was actually all everything was real. And then, uh, when I threw Fit Finley through a table one time, he almost lost his leg. And I saw his leg hanging there. I took my shirt off, stopped the match right then. That's when I got into it with Eric saying, Hey man, you, you're you're a hundred million dollar company, you can't go down to Home Depot and get some of the stuff for we're not killing each other every night, you know. But it definitely I didn't know it back then. That was, you know, we're talking 99, 2000, around 2001. But later on in life now, the, you know, doing that grind of going through tables and how many concussions, who knows, because you just kept going. But it definitely had an effect now the way I'm walking and, and all that stuff. And I, I blame that on the hardcore division, but I don't blame it anything because I signed on the dotted line, I got into it and I love this business and, you know, it is what it is. So 
you know, I'm not busy uh, or complaining here. I have time of my life doing this we job. Were in, uh, we were in, went through camp and we were living in Minnesota and came down here with Sean. And he, I go, what is that thing? He goes, we call that a breakfast burrito. I went, oh my God, it's a burrito and it has sausage, potatoes, eggs, cheese, jalapenos all in one. I was like, I thought, I thought, I, I just thought I found the newest invention on earth. I ate about 19 breakfast burritos. This is the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. The breakfast burrito. It was the first time I ever had it. I've eaten a million since. That's my favorite thing. But and, I, and he he's the first one ever. I think he took us to the Alamo and to the Riverwalk, which is badass. Great, beautiful town here. San Antonio, very beautiful. And, and, then, and a long history of wrestling, right? Oh yeah, yeah that, they, they, that building over there is like, we were just talking about it, about the Blues Brothers coming in, and uh, you know, Dan Aykroyd and uh, uh, John's brother Jim. Jim, yeah. And uh, we, we, we met them guys through the years, but I mean, back in the day, uh, when it was the Von Erics, and that building was the hottest building, those yeah. old school buildings. I mean, I mean El Elvis sang Elvis. over there, man. And then Elvis, and Elvis sang over there, and then uh, in 87 in the Tennessee Territory, me, Sat, and Shawn Michaels, and Marty, but Marty hurt his ankle, we're drunk, and we, we were, me and Sean and Sat were huge Elvis fans, so we were drunk, and we decided to jump over the wall at Elvis's to uh, go up to his grave and toast his grave and, and say, to the king. And so when we got up on the side, going over the wall, I said, I used to be in the army, let me take control here, so <laughs> I jumped over, and you could hear me like five miles away going through the leaves, <laughs> well, and then I went, got, got that uh, by the tree, yeah, but and I went, who do you, who do you, who do you, <laughs> and Sag looked at that guy, Sean Michaels and said, what the, what the hell, the, 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 the security guard, that dumb, they think there's an owl out at Elvis, is it, you know, two or three in the morning, you know, going to, who do you who? Who do you? But right, uh, but the, the, you got to hear that story from the beginning. We're 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 coming from a town somewhere in Mississippi, wrestling the Jerry Lawler territory of Memphis, and all of a sudden, I was driving the car and we're passed out. Like the brakes hit, I look up and I see music notes, and it's El it's a gate it's a gates of Graceland. Graceland. And I go, what the hell is he doing? And I see him get out of the car. I go, wake, I'm waking Sean and Marty up. No, and Sean was already up. And, and I go, Sean talked about and I go, uh, I go, uh, I go, what is he doing You were there? drunk that night. And he goes, uh, <laughs> Nobbs is uh, telling the, the I'm nasty boy, Brian Nobbs, and we want to come in and see. The guy goes, I don't give a shit who you are. Mm -hmm. You get your ass out of here or I'm calling. There'll be 50 police here in a minute. And that pissed him off. So we get in the car. He goes down a mile down the block. We go all the way around to a subdivision in the back. We climbed the stone wall and snuck into Graceland illegally. And then got chased around in there. I was in a Jeep from Blue Hawaii. And we were at the thing. We were, uh, and, and all Elvis' stuff, we were playing in there, running around. All of a sudden, that had happened. They chased us. And he hit well, the... Well, let me the finish the story. But that's okay. You can finish it now. I was going to get to that part. Tell the well, beginning. I was trying to get to the part, even getting through the yard, but I took control, like I said. But uh, then, after it was all over, and they spotted us, it's, they're over here. We had beers on it. by his grave, toasted them, and then sat, or Sean jumped over. There's a fence behind his horse, and they had like a wooden barn fence. And then Sag jumped over, and I was already out of breath. And I tried to, and I went right through the fence, and then I was laying there. And the fence was broke. They're over here, over yeah. here. And then Bob, I hit, I Bob hit. smashed Elvis's fence. And then after that, they got over the wall, so I couldn't get over the wall. I'm going, oh, man, I'm going to get busted here. And, you know, what should I do? So I buried myself with leaves just having my head sticking out. There was no <laughs> cell phones at the time, so they waited for me for like 45 minutes. So I could finally find the smallest part, and it's right there kind of at the front in the wall, you can see it. it's the lowest part where you can actually climb back over. And they said, they're waiting in a car for me, him and Sean, and uh, Marty Janet, and go, we thought you were caught, we thought you were busted. I said, no, I buried myself with leaves up to my neck, and the security guards are walking around me but, on Elvis's property. But, so God, hey, God bless the king, baby, the king of yeah. rock and roll. <laughs> That's a great story. But, that, you know, and the, the funny part is when he was buried in the leaves, that, that noise he was making, 
We're about hiding behind the wall, and we go, what happened to Knobs after he crashed through Elvis's fence? And we hear this goofy noise. I, you know, he, he, we hear hooty hoo, hooty hoo, and I go, I go, do they, does he really think they're gonna think that's some type of owl that lives in Graceland? I'm going, to, and we're like laughing out there. He's making this noise. I did that before. Yeah. I said I had it. And he's trying care. to signal us. I go, what the hell kind of bird do they think lives here? I mean, who is he tricking? They're going to find him. They didn't find him. He was buried in a pile of leaves. It was fall. Well, he was in the army, so he had training. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. He yeah. was trained in special forces how to hide. There you, you go. Know, that was a rare bird. I think we have a, we have a Come question on. from the audience. Come on. Come on. Give us your name and where you're from. My name is Savantis. I was born hey, in Atlanta. Hey, bro, bro, you can pull, oh. push that. Push yeah, that. yeah, there you go. There you go. My name is Savantis. I was born in Atlanta, but I was raised in San Antonio. Uh, recently, I found myself watching like the old Attitude Era, you know, WWE. I always found the wrestling impressive, but what I was finding impressive as of late was like the promos. And I was thinking if they had a script, and these are some long strips they got to remember for you know getting beat on the head and all that kind of stuff. So I guess my question is like, is it all like freestyle or is it more We like, never, we never had no scripts. It no. was just off the top. Just yeah, bullet we, points we, they never did, no. It's no. just bullet points that you had to follow. Bullet points, all stuff Man, up. Yeah, and then that's bullet good. points we would have in our mind and then also, uh, you know, the angles with it, whoever it was, you know, your team would get together and you would think of everything kind of in your brain and then kind of give it to them and then have, you know, that's why the matches are a lot different than they are today, you know, so. We, and even the talking wise, until you get into your own gimmick, you know, I would say uh, nowadays, when you're reading out of a script, you don't really get like, Stone Cold couldn't be Stone Cold if you gave him a script. Oh. You know, and a lot, a lot of times when Stone Cold goes back, He's not on no script. He's being he's being stone cold. He's coming off doing that regular interview, just like The Rock. I'm pretty sure you don't have The Rock on a on a script. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's respect for the, the older timers and, and Hulkster, of course, and Rick and then guys have some leeway. You know, but I think it's really hard to read unless you're a good actor or something. But, like they put this gimmick on you. You know, uh, we we found our gimmick early and we found it together and coming up with the nasty boys that fit us, you know, and Stone Cold, just like he tells you, you know, his wife, and he was trying to that transition from that uh, stunning Steve Austin, and, you know, she said to Stone Cold, if you ever heard that story, his first wife, that's how he got the name, kind of bringing in his head, Stone Cold Steve Austin, which portrayed more of how Steve's attitude was, you know what I mean? All them guys were Mr. Perfect, but Vince couldn't have picked, picked a better name for him because he was, me and Sag, basketball, he could hit the... <laughs> He could hit the, you know, uh, the hoop, no problem, three-pointer. If you're wanting to putt, a long putt, he could do that darts. Any game he, he, he would go against you, he would beat you. You know, so, that, you know, uh, Vince really came up with a good title there for Kurt, you know. But uh, uh, it's, uh, everybody has their own personality in the ring. And I think uh, nowadays, AEW is trying to do that a little bit more, you know. But uh, when you're in WWE, you got to think that's where you really want to be. Yes, no one's ever going to be bigger than WrestleMania. I mean, I mean, it's an honor for us to win the belts at WrestleMania Seven. That's still one of the people ask, "What's your favorite match?" Or, and to me, that is because that's what really etched us. I mean, that match before that that got us to the WWF against the Steiners in Halloween Havoc. That's why Vince called us in the first place, and then we didn't know we were going right, we pushed right in that lineup, but we were ready for it. And that WrestleMania 7 really stamped us as the Nasty Boys are so bad, you know what? And they, they won the belts off the Hart Foundation, let alone, who were big time over. So it was awesome. And there's, it, WrestleMania is still the Super Bowl of wrestling, and it always will be. I don't, I don't care who has a show. That is the show. I mean, seriously. And it would be an honor if we got in the WWE Hall of Fame, and hopefully one day we will. But you know what? Uh, we had a great time entertaining you guys. And nowadays, when we're sitting at these things and signing, people come up with old stories, and they say, hey, you were my childhood and everything. It makes you feel good, because we're thanking you for coming out, and you're thanking us for entertaining. So it's a mutual respect. As you get older, my mom and dad always told me that when I was young, I never listened to it. Now that I'm 59, ready for 60, kids, really listen to your mom and dad. They're, they're smarter than you think, let me tell you. Thank you for the question.
You guys had, uh, was that your greatest rivalry, the Hart Foundation, or who do you guys consider your biggest rivalry over the years? Well, we, the notable matches are the, the best rivalries we ever had, because it, it started, it's, it all started with the Steiner brothers yep. in WCW, and that Halloween Havoc match, and then coming out of that, propelled us to ju just get to the WWF, or he it was WWF at the time, yep. and then of course, the, the greatest match you can ever say is to face the Hart Foundation at WrestleMania 7 as a, as, as a wrestler, a tag team, to be able to, with the two of our greatest friends ever in life, and two of the, one of the greatest tag teams ever, at a WrestleMania is a pinnacle of our career. But we were in an era where we got to wrestle some of the best tag teams ever in the history of wrestling. You know, I could go, you go on and on, I mean, from the British Bulldogs to the Road Warriors to the Harlem Heat and the Rockers, and uh, I mean, just, you, you can't, you, you, it's too hard to name them all. There were so many tag teams. Yeah. At, 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 at one point in time, we got upset because I don't know, maybe 10 years or so ago, you know, they, they phased out the old tag teams that would come up together. Yep. You know what I mean? A tag team isn't, you know, we'll throw this guy, this guy, now they're a team. Right. In our day, Hawk and Animal, Steiner Brothers, Booker T and Stevie Ray, wherever British it was, Bulldogs, Demolition, British Bulldogs, you know, yes. they, they came up to the whole business as a team. And the psychology that they wrestled under was tag team psychology. Yeah, it was a specialty. You know what I mean? You don't do that anymore. Yeah, well, uh, there's some said, good guys out no, there. You got the good brothers, and I see, uh, uh, you know, I like the Briscoes. Uh, they're, they're good. And, and, I mean, I follow uh, uh, WWE, some teams in there. Everybody got a good uh, variety of street profits and stuff profits, like yeah. that. Yeah, and so, uh, yeah, I, I'm liking what I'm seeing, you know. So, uh, definitely, they know, it's, they know tag team wrestling's a... Uh, People like to see it, you know what I mean? And sure. get teams together, so, you know, and they got somewhat of managers, but back in our day, there was more colorful managers. You know, you had uh, Jimmy Hart, Hart, you had Bobby the Brain Heenan. I mean, you, the list goes on and on. Mr. Fuji, I mean, Slick. I mean, it, you know, everybody had a character, so uh, different times, but you know, overall, the wrestling fan out there, uh, there's so many more options. The last couple of years before, there was just one brand. Now there's all, you know, not only AEW, but all these other littler ones coming out. You got NWA starting up. And, so that's all good for, for the wrestling fans and the wrestling, you know, on our end. You know, there's, there's more places to work, which is good. Because back, back when we were little territories, and there was a, this Texas had a territory here by the Devon Eriks, and, uh, and there was, uh, I forget what, uh, um, Jose Lothario used to have his own, uh, his, that's who trained Shawn Michaels, but he was here in San Antonio, and uh, they all had their little groups, and that's where you went and wrestled and learned. You didn't get paid very much, but you learned the craft of pro wrestling, and, and it must have got us somewhere because we're out here, and you guys are here listening to us, so we must have did something right, so thank you again for coming out. We really appreciate it, you know? Yeah. I got uh, one special request for you gentlemen. Uh, you had a fan that uh, unfortunately couldn't be here today. He's no longer with us. His name was Roy Robles and was wondering if you can just give wait, a shout out to when, him. When you say no longer with us, he passed away? Yes. No. Oh, yeah. You mean he's not here? You mean he passed away? Right. He's just not at the building. He's gone. Gone, yeah. Oh my so, God. So somebody wanted God, to... God bless him. What's, what's Roy his name? Robles. If you can give a shout out to your fan, Roy Robles. Well, God bless him. Anybody that's a fan, the poor guy in here, if you're listening, his name I know he's Texas. listening. His name's Roy Robles. Roy, from the Nasty Boys, God bless. Nasdorovia. Uh, be nasty up there. We're all coming to see you soon anyway. You just beat us to the punch, but we're, we'll, we'll keep the nasty going down here. You keep it going up there, and God bless. Yes, definitely. Appreciate it. They're going to be here all weekend. You can catch them in the autograph area. Y'all make some noise for the Nasty Boys. Whoa. Hey, did you have a question? Did you have a question? Well, he, I think actually already got my card ready. It was more about the tag team. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So you were looking like you were. Anybody else that we...
Who's got a question? Come on, we, we, we we're not going nowhere. I can see somebody was itching. Go for it, go for it. What was it like, or like the scariest match you ever had? Dangerous. What was most dangerous? Dangerous. dangerous. Never had. Scary. Well, you know, we, we did those uh, first street fights with, uh, that's how, you know, really, uh, we, we call him Cactus Jack, because that's what he was, but that's Mick Foley. And we wrestled with, with Mick when he was Cactus Jack, with him and Max Payne, we did the Chicago street fight, and the best one, the only one that beat us that year for the the, 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 the the match of the year was Sean and Razor Ramon, two of our best friends in that latter match. We were number two, I think, wow. in 1994, and uh, that was the that was a Philadelphia Broad Street bully match. And I don't I, I don't know if you guys are hockey fans, but uh, we're from Philadelphia, in Eastern Pennsylvania. Broad Street Bullies were some of the most badass hockey players ever. And they were the Philadelphia Flyers, always fighting. They started all that stuff back in the 70s. And we had, it was, uh, was Clark, right, Noms? Uh, uh, oh, oh, there's the Hammer Schultz. Here's the Blues Brothers are here. Ba 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 that again. Soul man. It is. Look at this. Belushi down there. How about it from the Blues Brothers, baby? I just saw him down there. Um, but what was it? What were we talking about? I don't know. That's what happened. Too many chair shots. No, what? See that? No, yeah. but scary matches, you know. All the, oh, all scary. The, thing, the, one, the one got me just to, uh, physically was the one where Max Payne didn't know which way he was throwing me. He kind of goes out now and says he did it. And he knew he was doing it. Really, he forgot which suplex he was giving me, and I landed here. My back of my feet came around, touched my head, my shoulder right out. And he knew I was hurt right away, so I could barely get up. And I'm all of a sudden, I could get up. Yeah, but that, that's, and an he, that's an accident. Uh, yeah. Uh, he said, What match, baby, you got was your oh, worst? Yeah, yeah, worst. Worst. yeah like, Most I, dangerous. Yeah, so injury kind of. That was yeah. the one, and he ripped my arm out. and. Side saw was with his, his shoot now, and he had the guitar, so that was supposed to be the finish. And, and if you watch that, that's what you call not fake. That's uh, that's totally real, and they didn't need no help with that guitar because it split it all over. But he bashed Max over the head because he didn't. Everybody thought I could have broke my neck, you know. So that was about the worst uh, worst one I had. You know, out there, that oh, I thought something was what wrong. About, what about the uh, when the Halloween Havoc when he took the Frankensteiner? From the yeah, but the, that, that, that looked, looked like a, it, it looked devastating. It, but uh, Scotty took care of me. I took the Frankensteiner. It looked like it just drove my head in. But what made it where I was and Scotty taking care of me, it really didn't injure me at all. But both, but both that those, one, yeah. both those moves, if he wasn't flexible like he was. Uh, both of those moves would have would have broke his neck. Yeah, Rick Rick would start that I was but maybe snap my neck when it when it happened. You know, they were all worried, stinging all the guys were in the back, worried the hell, you know. It's hard to get rid of one of the nasty boys too. <laughs> For some reason the, the big man upstairs wants to be around a while, so I'm uh, I'm here to entertain. I I told him I get it now. All right, I get it, I get it, I get it. Let's uh let's uh, you still gotta go out and do your thing and, and you know uh, do something right, you know, instead of just mash somebody over there with a, you know, chair or put their face in your armpit. Let's, uh, Pit <laughs> City. Yeah, uh, talk Nobody about said. scary. We, go ahead. Whenever y'all get together, friends, y'all ever get into it? Y'all ever get into you it mean, when you get together you with friends? We're together you know, that, well, one, like, one time. It's like, uh, <laughs> or me and him, me and him. Yeah. Or, or with our other buddies. Uh, well, in any any kind of rock and roll, any kind of industry, sports, you always that, that you always have that, uh, that 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 stiff competition, and then sometimes it turns into live, the real deal, and it did many times because of our style, like that for sure. Yeah. Well, nobody wanted to wrestle the Steiners when we came in. They were, the Steiner was supposedly hurting people. I said, well, you're going to wrestle the Steiners at a program, and we were barring fighters. He said, hell yeah. 
So when they were throwing, throwing us wherever, we never got hurt, but we'd come up and punch them right in the face. And it was a mutual respect there, and they're our best friends, you know, we're best friends, and we had some of the greatest matches with the Steiners. And Hawk and Animal. You know, they became good friends with us, and I'll tell you, back in the day, Hawk was one bad dude, man. He was, a, <laughs> he was you know, he was not only professional wrestling, Hawk, you know, personified outside the ring, he was a tough SOB. It, he could knock people out with one punch. Tell Sag, he knocked Sag out. Uh, thought Sag was, uh, you know, giving him, sniffing him in the ring, and he threw him in for a clothesline and popped Sag, and Sag was kind of going back with the bump, but he, he hit him and knocked him out. Sag was out cold, <laughs> and he and Jimmy had dragged Sag over. And he goes, I can go in, I can go in. But his legs weren't working. He was laying there like a dead fish, like this. He said, you can't get in there. So I got to go in and take the finish. He was all cold. He was like, get in there. <laughs> and Jimmy goes, just stay there, baby. And I had to go in and take all this stuff. I guess Hawk thought he was stiffing him, you know. Like, what the? You know, but that's the way we worked. And then he, you know, found out. But he felt the power of, uh, you know, Hawk from the Road Warriors, you know, so. And we're both, they're both not here with us no more, and that's a shame. You know, we lost Animal here not too long ago, and they were really good. I mean, close friends, everything, so. Just like the Bushwhackers, we're still friends with Luke, and, you know. How many how many root beers for that guy now? Three, Three oh, beers. Man. Hey, you dropped your phone down there. But it's it's awesome hey. to be out here with you guys, yeah, and thank you for having us. Tonight. No, I, really, I really appreciate it. Thank you, and uh, thank you. keep watching, man. You know, there's, there's, a, there's some good wrestling coming at you, so, you know, keep on watching. So, we hey, had a good time. Anybody else want to ask stuff before we go? Oh, the, the, the little guy, oh, come on. We got to be real quick, we got like two so, minutes. Somebody keeps playing the music and cutting the poor kick, the poor little guys off. And that's what's it. What was your, great, what was your greatest tag team match of all time? Oh. Like I said, it has to be the Hart Foundation, but there's a lot of other matches that were special too, like SummerSlam against the, in Madison Square Garden against the Road Warriors LOD. I mean, uh, them, were, them were two of the biggest in, in our mind for the public that they, they could see, but along the way, you know, with the uh, Harlem Heat, we had great matches with them, Public Enemy, I mean, uh, Demolition, I mean, the British Bulldogs, we wrestled everybody. I mean, the Rockers, Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty, uh, Bushwhackers, there was a long list of good tag teams out there. So uh, we wrestled everybody and we're still here. So knock on wood somewhere. <laughs> so but thank you, little guy. He, who's your favorite wrestler now? Stone Cold. Yeah. That's my boy. Yeah, he's a, he's a good friend of mine. I hey, talked yo. to him about, about a month ago. We want to thank uh, Brian and, and Jerry for talking with us. Y'all make some noise for the Nasty Boys! Coming up next to the stage, the Texas Blues, but y'all stick around. Are the Blues Brothers coming up? Thanks, everybody. AJ and Ivan here. For more GeekCast episodes, subscribe to us on your podcast app and please write us a review. Be sure to like us at Facebook at facebook.com slash countdowncitygeekcast. Follow us on Twitter at ccg underscore podcast or visit our website at www.countdowncitygeekcast.com. See you later, guys.